Solista Diana Damrow este una dintre cele mai apreciate soprane de coloratură ale lumii. Puțin știu că cea care a ajutat-o să-și dezvolte vocea a fost solista de talie internațională Carmen Hanganu. Aceasta a îndrumat-o pe Diana până după terminarea conservatorului, iar prietenia dintre cele două este vie și în ziua de astăzi. Diana, draga mea, îți urez și îți doresc mare succes și admirația publicului român. Este un public cald, cunoscător și iubitor a tot ce înseamnă adevărata artă. Diana, vocea și interpretarea ta au cucerit milioane de ascultători și sunt convinsă că și în România, patria mea, vei cuceri publicul și vei fi apreciată la justa valoare. Te îmbrățișez cu dragoste și căldură și pe curând. Mm, you recognize it? So lovely, lovely. <laughs> yeah, my Carmen Hanganu. <laughs> What does Carmen Hanganu mean to you? Oh my God, she is a role model. She is everything I ever expected from an artist. She is a beautiful singer with greatest skills. She is an artist, she understands the language, the drama, she is an actress, she, she is a beautiful woman. Yes. And when I saw the photos of her, when she sang Violetta in La Traviata, or when she sang Butterfly, uh, it's, it's just always, you see, this is the character, and it's just stunning beauty and dignity and a, a real woman. It's, it's amazing. And when, when I met her for the first time, I wanted to kiss the floor where she's walking and just it, it hoped that she, that she can help me to find my voice and if my voice is suitable to be an, to be an opera singer and, and well, artistry comes much later. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you remember your first classes with her? Oh, yes. Oh, I yes. know you played piano first and then come. Yes, yes. Um, well, m my wish to become an opera singer started when I was 12 years old and I saw at home on TV uh, the movie with uh, the Traviata movie by Zeffirelli with Domingo and Teresa Stratas. And after that, my wish was, oh my God, I would love to be able to do this with my voice and and play these beautiful stories and ca characters and make people feel with the music and the sounds which go somewhere else than just words. Uh, just the, the cosmos of opera, if I would be able to do this in my, my life, it, it would be the greatest gift of all. But for that you need a teacher. So we started when I was 15 and I couldn't wait till that point. And then she showed me, we were in, in a room in a school in, in my hometown in Günzburg and, and she showed me how to breathe. So she, she took my hands and she put it on her stomach and she started breathing and I was like, <gasps> and, and then you, you pronounce the sound and, and to, to, yeah, to, to, to get the breathing technique and uh, the, the basis of, of singing and this was I, I was I was ashamed and shocked and amazed by, by, by all this and well what came out of my voice was not <laughs> not what's coming out now. So it was a long, long way and and Carmen Angano always with with her ears and her and her love and respect for the composers and for art, she always tried to like to polish a diamond to really put me on the right track that I can study, learn and then later walk freely myself and find my voice and, and, and continue. 
Carmen Hangano said in an interview that uh, when you were 19, you had the exam to enter the Würzburg Conservatory. You had a great show there in front of the examinators. And uh, when you were asked who guided you till uh, then, you proudly said Carmen Hangano. Is it so? <laughs> yes, indeed. It, it was amazing. Um, I, I sang all the pieces and even more uh, which were, were asked for at the audition and uh, after that I got applause and I said, wow, you're, you're so young, you just turned 19 and, yes. and who is your teacher? And I said, yes, it's Carmen Angano and one of, one of uh, them, Mr. Peter Falk, he said, I know the name, I know the name, uh, tell me, tell me about her, tell us about her. So here is the chair, boom, <laughs> and I, I sat down and I gave an interview and told the story of the life of my teacher. And, and then, since I didn't know, normally you go to one of the professors or you have already contacted a professor of, of, uh, of the conservatory uh, with whom you want to continue mm -hmm. studying, but we were like, okay, whoever takes me will, will be, it will be fine, it will be fine. And I knew that I will never lose uh, Carmen Arano. You, she stood by you? She stood by me till, till now, actually. <laughs> yes. And, and so what happened, the jury said, Mrs. Hallstein, Ingeborg Hallstein, very famous uh, uh, coloratura soprano herself, she, she said, so we know we want to have you in our classes, but we think you're on the right track. You're so young, you should not stop working with your teacher. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, but um, Carmen Angano said, I cannot come home with, not, with no place to study and I need to have my diploma yes. and, and learn Italian and learn how to, how to act and how to fall and the opera school, really everything, uh, uh, music theory, everything which is, is combined. And then they said, okay, then we do something probably in Germany, I think, never was done before, we engage your teacher. Mm -hmm. So, so beautiful. I came with a big, big bouquet of flowers to, to Mrs. Hangano's house and said, I have the place to study and I have a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the teacher too. And this was amazing. We were, we were just, she, she was speechless. We were, were all, it was like a fairy tale and it was the greatest gift of God that I, yeah, that I was meant to meet Carmen Angano and she to help me and to do this, this path together. It's so important, the teacher. In Absolutely. It's the most important. Not every teacher is good for everybody. Yes. It's, a, it's very personal. It's like a, like, like a partnership. And you must have them, you, you must understand and feel Also, Carmen Hangano said in an interview that you kept your feet on the ground, even uh, though your career is uh, boundless. Is how come? <laughs> well, you. I'm you... Bavarian, <laughs> and I come from a small town, and my parents are wonderful. They, they really, the values they gave to me and, and my brother is really to keep the feet on the ground and everybody can be replaced, every success uh, can have an end. Uh, it's just to try to be a great human and the best you can be for the others and, and for yourself. And also as, a, as an opera singer, it's not that you are the diva and you give something. No, we give what God gave to us. The, we, are, we are kind of a medium for the amazing works of the greatest composers like Mozart, like Bach, like Strauss, like whatever, the, who gave big treasures to us and 
to, in order to touch our hearts. Are you happy to be here in Bucharest? Oh yeah, finally, finally. <laughs> it's your first time here? Yes, it's my first time. And I can't wait to explore the city a little bit. Carmen Langano told me, yeah, go there and go there. Yes. And, we, and, and that I'm tomorrow with, with the harp, with the recital, we are in, in the most beautiful hall. I saw pictures of it and I, I can't wait. <laughs> Well, Xavier and I, we met, uh, we both had our debut at the Salzburg Festival and uh, I sang Voce dal Cello in, uh, in Don Carlo uh, by Verdi and he played the harp uh, with me up there in the wings of the opera and uh, yeah it, it, and, we, and we became friends um, with his wife I studied in Würzburg so coincidences and one day we uh, Xavier told me you know it was the time when he when he played at the uh, with the uh, Wiener Philharmonica at Vienna at the Opera House um, he did solo things, but he, he started his solo career and he said, do you know, I, 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 can, I can play also songs with the harp. Uh, come on, let's see that. And since he's French, he knows the French repertoire. He, he, he's used to accompany voices and listen to voices. And he has a great love for poetry and, and the whole repertoire. So we dived into our scores and made a, a real session, you would say, in pop music. We were just mm -hmm. trying out this and this and this and this. And then, well, now we have, I think, our fourth or fifth program where we're, we're performing. And it's, it's a great friendship and it's a great musical friendship. <laughs> You will sing um, also with the uh, LSO Orchestra. How do you feel about that? Oh well, <laughs> it feels like, I think it feels like Kate Winslet on the top of the Titanic. Yes. <laughs> Queen of the Night mm -hmm. was the role which you sing uh, many times and many years. You have 15 different variants and different scenes. Mm -hmm. They say Mozart composed that score to make fun for the sopranos, because no one can be able to sing that. <laughs> the role of the Queen of the Night was written for a dramatic coloratura soprano. Mm -hmm. Very light voices can sing it, Mm -hmm. but they always will have little problems here and there. If with the, with the dramatic coloratura soprano, it, which goes up and high, to, uh, yeah, that you can reach the far, and it's always there. Um, there are not so many voices of that kind 
you, you, you're right. Know. But there are a lot of singers who can sing the Queen of the Night. Coratura, you, you start very young your career mm -hmm. and you get to sing the most amazing roles very early as, mm -hmm. as a very, very young artist. Uh, for instance, Lucia di Lamormur, when you come from, from the very, when your voice is very high, you can, you can sing big and important and beautiful roles of bel canto and, yes, and, and Queen of the Night. Basses, for example, they, they have the big career later. If they don't do Mozart, they have the big career with Verdi much later in, in, the, in their 40s or 50s. Um, that's when the coloraturas will probably change their repertoire. <laughs> when I was four and a half years old, four, four years old in the kindergarten, uh, in Carnival, I didn't want to be a princess in pink and, and, and nice and cute. I wanted to be the mean stepmother. So probably, <laughs> okay, and probably you that's don't. already there. <laughs> Every girl wants to be the princess. Yeah. I think what is said that Mozart made fun of his uh, mother-in-law because she was she was angry and then and then she screamed and uh, and and he figured out oh yeah this is actually nice <laughs> do you think he composed that for her? <laughs> he composed that and well he had uh, two wonderful coratura uh, sopranos in his family so I think he made his wife and. Um, and her sister sing this role. <laughs> I think they had a lot of fun. Mozart was just the greatest. You work a lot, you have a very busy schedule, and uh, I know you have family. Yes. I know you have two boys, Alexander and Colin. Mm -hmm. How did these two work together, the career and the family? Well, it's, I, my husband is a singer too, and he, and he sang also at the UNESCO festival in Damnation de Faust. And we're, we're really trying to organize our calendars that every time, we, for, for us it was clear, we want children and we, no, we want to because they have to be together and, yes. and play and yeah, in, and we want to travel with them and that's what we did, we jumped kindergarten, we took them everywhere. Uh, when I was on stage singing uh, uh, my first Elvira in Puritani, uh, it was the first role after the first baby, and I breastfed in the in the intermission, and and then uh, okay, the nanny was there, the baby heard my voice, everybody was calm, it was nice, and when on stage and sang it, it it it, it, it felt complete. Well, there was no time for anything else, <laughs> but it was it's wonderful. It's it's organization mm -hmm. and it's, it's, yes, it's teamwork. And my husband is, is a wonderful father. And so we, we, we do our best that, to make this work. Mm -hmm. School is a bit difficult, but yes, yeah, it's I a know challenge. you're here in Bucharest and they began school. Isn't yes. So? yes, and my husband jumps in for Puritani in, in, in Paris now. And, but we have Oma and Opa. <laughs> the grandparents. Yeah. So they they're always there and and help that the family works and everything goes together. And they're very happy with with their grandchildren. It's it's a miracle to see how they grow, how they how they think and start asking questions and see their talents, see their characters and, and yeah, it's it's wonderful. Did they begin to sing? They, they, sing they sing all the time. They sing all the time. Yeah, yeah. Pop and rock and uh, opera. sometimes opera, whatever they like. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see them uh, on a scene or, or on an orchestra or maybe opera singer? 
Maybe. Well, Alexander is a great dancer. He's, he's wonderful with his, with his body, with the rhythm. He has a fantastic ear. Um, and he loves to be, well, between us. <laughs> he said to a friend when, when, when they asked him, uh, so do, would, you be, would you like to become a singer as well, like your parents? Uh, like music, yes, yes, singing, yes, yes, yes. Like your parents said, no, no, I want to be a professional singer. Like Michael Jackson, he said then. <laughs> <laughs> so it, this story will be there for his whole life, I think. <laughs> so we see what, what, he's going, what he's going to be then.